Hey, welcome in. Well, is the NBA trying to entice me back so I'll watch one of their games again? Well, if they're trying to do that, I gotta tell them they, they got their work cut out for them. You know, it's gonna take a lot more than just, uh, you know, let's pretend none of this ever happened <laughs> type thing. Anyway, here's the headline. NBA will leave social justice messages to be delivered off the floor amid ratings dive. And what a ratings dive means is a profits dive. And can you think of something that uh, the people who run the NBA care about more than social justice? I can. It's probably money. Anyway, let's get into this. It says, amid news that the NBA is clocking record low ratings for the 2020 NBA Finals. And I just have to say that the NBA is giving me lots of material <laughs> these days for a guy who refuses to watch it anymore. They're still giving me lots to talk about because it's interesting culturally. In fact, from a cultural and a, and a business perspective, this is actually really interesting. It's actually, in my opinion, a lot more interesting than watching the actual games themselves. But anyway, amid news that the NBA is clocking record low ratings for the 2020 NBA Finals, League Commissioner Adam Silver told NBA Countdown that professional basketball will leave social justice messages off the floor next season. I think, honestly, it might be a bit late for that. You know, and I think that the rot has set in. And I think so many people have been really offended by them. Again, I don't think this is stuff that people are going to forget anytime soon. Anyway, it says the 2020 season played in a bubble because of the current health situation. And it's a bubble in more ways than one. I think that's obvious, right? But anyway, it prominently featured BLM messaging. NBA players were encouraged to replace their surnames on their jerseys with social justice-themed messaging. Terrible idea. And the slogan BLM was printed across the court where bubble, again, more than just one kind of bubble, uh, bubble games were played. Uh, the league's decision to embrace the BLM movement was controversial even among team owners. But Silver demanded that teams comply to show support for the league's black players, according to NBC News. But here's the problem. You're, not, you're asking them to support more than that. And something that isn't really that at all in reality. I mean, do I support equality? Yes, of course. Equity? No. That's a Marxist concept. You know, and do I support Marxism? No. Do I support the destruction of the nuclear family? No. Do I support defunding police? No. And I don't care if that's on court or off. I, I'm not in. You can count me out. And that's what BLM actually stands for. You know, beyond the platitudes, this is what, this is the foundation of it. This is what it really believes in. So the whole thing is just a sleight of hand intended to get, to shame people into supporting things that they don't support in the name of something that sounds like something, of course, everybody would support. Again, it's a, it's a trick. It's a sleight of hand. And just simply pretending that that's not real, as the NBA and all the sports leagues have done, that's not going to help. It's, you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can't fool all the people all the time. And I want to show you something quickly here, which is very relevant. And this was a study done, a poll done back in 2013, and what it shows is the, the politics, essentially, of sports fans. The left is Democrat. The right is Republican. The top is more likely to vote. The bottom is less likely to vote. Most sports fans fall into this top right uh, quadrant where they're more likely to vote. So politics are important to them. And they're uh, Republicans or moderates. And then you see the NBA is way over here on the left. But the vast majority are, are not, they're, they're not left wing. They just aren't, they're either moderate or Republican. And a lot of these people in this top right part are the casual fans who would inflate the numbers for an NBA Finals with LeBron James in it, right? And if these sports fans are alienated and they're not going to pad the numbers there for the NBA Finals, well, that's gonna show. I mean, you'd think this would have been something that uh, the NBA marketing people would have thought about, but anyway. It says, of the league's 350 players, 300 chose to wear jerseys with social justice messaging. But anyway, it says, uh, but the league is now struggling to retain viewership. 
after all of this messaging. According to Sports Illustrated, the 2020 NBA Finals between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat, two teams that typically draw in huge audiences, is the lowest in league history. Game 3 of the NBA Finals drew just over 5 million viewers. Game 2 was below that to be the lowest viewed Finals game of all time. Just going to interrupt for one second to say if you like this content, subscribe so you can see more. Thanks a lot. And let's see, Sports Illustrated cites cord cutting and bad scheduling for the dramatic loss in viewership. But hey, look, we're talking like viewership down like over 60%. That's not just cord cutting and bad scheduling. That's something else happening there. Because, you know, there's also a lot more eyes available to watch these games. And if they want to bring people back, I have to say they've got their work cut out. Because at this point, it's kind of transcended the messaging for me. Changing the channel and actually just not spending time watching the TV at all. In the time I would have been watching, you know, a hockey game or a football game or whatever. Has really changed the way that I now look at professional sports and athletes. And their relevancy, which at this point, for me, equals zero. You know, when you see these games for what they actually are, which is just a bunch of people who don't really know anything, who make a lot of money for being really good at playing games, and you know, if my team wins the cup, I don't actually get anything. That's the thing. There's actually nothing material in my life that, that improves. And what does that mean? It means these games are completely inconsequential to my well-being, to my family's well-being, to my friend's well-being, to the world at large. And I think that the sports world is going to discover that once the spell is broken, you know, your, your mind creates a, a natural immunity to hype and bullshit after that. I think it's going to be hard to get a lot of people back in again, not just because they're unhappy with the messaging, but because perhaps they have a bit of an epiphany. None of this actually matters. I know for myself, I regret now all of the, what, thousands and thousands of hours I spent staring at a TV watching grown men playing games. Now, one caveat. I am going to watch uh, Lomachenko on the 17th. Lomachenko Lopez. I am going to watch that. I'm going to watch the big boxing matches still. And that may be irrational after everything I've just said, but there is something that separates combat sports from the other sports. And there's not that many big matches a year. But with that admitted, yeah, I think they're going to have a tough time. I think the sports leagues have caused themselves massive, massive problems by taking the path of least resistance, which is what Hollywood has done as well. And Hollywood is in a lot of trouble now too. And why? It's taking the path of least resistance, which they saw as embracing all of the wokeness. And sometimes the easy thing to do is the worst thing to do. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney, The Richie Baloney Show. It's on every platform, including Spotify. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.